Hi, I'm David Ellison, and this is the Rock House Method Level 1 program for learning to play metal bass guitar. I've been a metal bass guitarist most of my life, I've been a musician for most of my life, and I've certainly been a huge metal fan. Throughout all of my career, though, the one thing I have known how to do is to be a well-rounded, versatile musician. And this started when I was a very young boy. I learned how to play keyboards, I learned how to play saxophone, I learned how to play guitar, and most importantly, my passion about playing bass guitar. This has given me a firm bedrock for everything that I've done throughout my professional career. Now in this program, you're going to learn all the basics you need to get started playing bass and to develop as a metal bass player. I also want to let you know about something else that's really cool, that this program comes with a free online lesson support. Go to the main menu to find out how to register for your free membership at rockhousemethod.com. So grab your bass, let's go. Let's go tear it up and play some metal. Okay, to get things started, let's first of all take a look at the parts of the bass. Essentially, there are three parts of the instrument. There's the body, there's the neck, and then there's the headstock. So starting from the top to the bottom, the headstock consists of the tuning keys, which are designed to tune the instrument. Then there are always two nuts involved with the bass. There's this nut right here, which the strings go over, and then the other nut is the one who's playing the instrument. Down below that we have the, uh, the frets, which are run the entire length of the fingerboard. Down here we have the pickups, and this is what actually amplify, helps amplify the instrument so that we actually hear the sound from it as it runs through its amplifier. Down here we have the bridge, which anchors the strings into the body. And we have the electronics, which are ultimately the volume and our tone controls. Down here we have the jack where you plug the instrument in so that it would, you can be connected to the amplifier. And then on the end of the bass and also up here, we have the strap buttons, which is what you use if you want to be in the standing position using a strap. So there you have it. Those are the parts of the bass. Let's talk about a comfortable position for your playing the bass. Most of what we're going to be doing in this program, I'm going to be sitting down playing, and you as a beginner learning to play the instrument will most likely want to be sitting down because it'll be the most effective position for you to be in to properly play and study and learn. Essentially, most basses are cut out with a contour down here, so you can put the bass, in my case, I'm a right-handed player, so a right-handed player would usually set it on, on your right leg. If you were a left-handed player, this, all of these mechanics would be completely the opposite. So as you hold the bass, it's most important to just be comfortable. And usually with the neck coming across your body, as opposed to being back this way, will afford you the, the ability to move your hand comfortably out as you extend your arm down to the upper reaches of the neck, which is where we're going to be doing most of our playing in this program. Now for your right hand, which is your picking or plucking hand, you should be able to rest your hand comfortably back here so that you don't break your wrist because that, that can cause some serious tension and problems uh, as well as it, it can affect the way that your ability to play the instrument. I like to, when I'm playing with my fingers, be able to anchor my thumb right here on usually a pick on the pickup or on a pick guard or something, even this one of the strings. But essentially you should just be comfortable and you should be re relaxed when you're playing. So now you know how to hold the bass. Okay, before we get going on any playing, we need to make sure that our instrument is in tune. And for these purposes today, you can tune to me, and I'm going to go across the strings. I have a four-string bass, and the first string is, the, is this smallest, skinniest string up here on the top, which is a G string. The second string below that is the D string. The third string is an A string. And the fourth string is the biggest, fattest string here, which is the E string. So I'm going to play each string so that you can tune your instrument and you use your tuning peg on the top to tune. You can either raise the pitch or you can tune it toward you to lower the pitch. So here's the G string. Now you should be able to raise or lower it to get in tune here. Now I'm going to go to the D string. Now we'll go to the A string.
And finally, we'll go down to the E string. There's also a tuner available at the rockhousemethod.com website that you can download that you will be able to use to help you better with that. And now you should be in tune. Let's do some playing. Now I want to teach you how to read tablature, or tab as it's commonly called. Tablature is a numbering system for reading notes on the neck of a guitar or bass. It does not require you to have any knowledge of standard music notation, and this system was designed specifically for guitar and bass. What you're looking at right now is a bar of tablature. You'll see four horizontal lines, and those represent the strings on your bass. The top line is going to represent your G string, which is the smallest string. The one below that is your D string. Below that is your A string, and beneath that is your E string, the biggest string. You're also going to see some numbers on the strings. These correspond to the frets that you're going to be playing on with your left hand. So, for example, you'll see a zero. That would mean not to play any frets at all. That's an open string. When you see a three, that means with your left hand, you're going to play the third fret on the E string because that's where the three is. The next string up, you're going to see a two, and that's your A string. That means you're going to play on the second fret of your A string. And then above that, you're going to see the D string has a two also. So you're going to take your finger off the A string and place it on the D string and play on the second fret. Now you may notice these little numbers underneath the numbers that are on the strings. And these correspond to your left hand fingers that should be playing these notes on the frets. The little number one corresponds to your index finger. Number two is your second finger. Number three obviously is your third finger. And four would be your pinky. This just helps you play when you're trying to work out positions because a lot of times you're going to run into things that are complicated or seem like you don't have enough fingers to play. So this will help you out. Let's go over some real simple techniques here before we start playing. So that now that we're comfortable with the bass and we know the parts of the bass, let's talk about a few techniques with both the left and the right hand that will help get the most optimum sound out of your fingers. Because ultimately playing, as much as we can learn all kinds of nifty cool things about playing the bass, our real sound comes down to our own personality and the way that we touch and feel and, and play the instrument. So with our left hand, which is going to finger the, uh, the neck up here, we want to make sure that our hand is really in, in kind of a C position so that you're always using the back of your, your the, the neck is touching with your thumb. And from there what that's going to allow us to do is play on the tips of the fingers. We want to always be up on the tips as much as we can as opposed to just laying our hand across the, uh, across the string. That will give us a much more clear, more precise sound. And we also want to try to finger in between the frets not directly on the fret either. But again, we want to be able to use our ears for this to make sure that we're getting the cleanest, clearest sound possible. Now, a lot of people play the bass with fingers. I actually do a little bit of both. I, I pluck the bass with my fingers and I also use a pick. For plucking, it's just a matter of just simply raking your hand across the, across the strings. And ultimately, we like to use a one and second finger uh, approach to pluck in the bass. So you can incorporate more fingers later on, but everybody mostly uses one and two, and it seems to be the simplest. And again, anchoring on a pickup is always a good technique for that. Okay, let's talk about the pick now. There's many different gauges, styles, many different manufacturers out there that make picks. I, in particular, like to use a medium heavy gauge pick, and I, I like to use a Tortex pick instead of plastic. The Tortex to me is a little more durable, it's a little bit stronger, and it doesn't slip out between my fingers because it has a little more grit to it. Now, when holding the pick, you want to hold the pick between your first finger and your thumb. You want to make sure that it's blocked in there and it's comfortable. And just like we discussed earlier with being comfortable with the instrument, you're going to want to find your own place back here where you want to anchor your uh, pinky, which I often do between underneath a string or on the pickup. And ultimately, you want to you know, be in a position where you can, if you pluck a little closer to the neck, you're going to have a deeper sound. If you pluck a little bit closer back here to the uh, bridge, you're going to have a kind of a, a thinner, jazzier sound. So I like to be somewhere in the middle where I can find something that has a comfortable sound to it. Speaking of sound, let's do some playing. Let's go.
A couple of other fundamentals that I want to go over are some scales. To start with, we're going to start with the major scale. And for any of you that may have taken any piano lessons, if you walk up to a piano, the first key that you're always going to be introduced to is the middle C, which is the middle of the keyboard. So on, on a bass guitar, a middle C is actually right up here on that note, which is the fifth fret on the G string. So our scale is going to go for one octave, meaning that we're going to play from the bottom up and then we're going to go from the top down. And this scale will sound like this. Now on playing this scale, this is a scale that doesn't have any accidentals, meaning there's no sharps or flats. So start with your second finger on the A string on the third fret. Now this shape that you're going to use, in other words, these fingers that are going to finger this scale, you can move this scale and this finger shape anywhere across the neck and be able to play a major scale. So as much as you're learning the music and the notes, you're also essentially learning a couple of cool little things right now which will help you in almost any setting be able to play with all kinds of people because you'll be able to just move your hand around the neck. So here, why don't you play along with me? And we're going to take it real slow. And another thing that I want, I'd really advise you to do if you don't have one handy is to get a metronome or a drum machine. And a metronome is essentially a timekeeper and there is one available at rockhousemethod.com that you can download that you can have. I would always with these exercises start slow, learn them, be solid with them, and then start speeding them up to challenge yourself. So let's start at a slow tempo here and we'll start again second finger, third fret, on the A string. Now we'll go back down. There you have it, the major scale. Now, unlike the major scale, the minor scale always has a darker, more ethereal sound to it. And it's something that's very popular in metal and hard rock music because it gives a little, little, little darker tone to it. So it's a, an important scale to learn. Again, the finger shape that we're going to use, you can move this all over the neck and be able to play minor scales. We, first, we started with a C major scale in the previous section. The relative minor to that is A minor. That right now isn't so much as important as actually learning the shape. Again, set your metronome to a slow tempo, and I'm going to play it for you first so that you actually know what it sounds like. Here we go, in A minor. So to get started with this, again, we're going to use one finger for each fret. So we're going to start with our first finger on the fifth fret of the fourth string, which is the E string. Again, set your metronome at a slow tempo, and let's take a stab at it here. There it is, the minor scale. Now we get down to finally doing some playing. You've learned some basic techniques that will help you get your hands comfortable on the neck, learning how to pick and pluck back here. This is the figure that I was just playing. It's something that you can do. It's a real simple first bass line and it only uses one string and you only have to use two fingers essentially up here on the neck. Essentially what we're going to do is we're going to start out playing on the A string, which is the third string. We're going to use our first finger on the third fret, which is our C. And we're going to use our third finger to go up to the fifth fret, which is a D. And we're just going to cycle through that. Now with the picking hand, what we're going to do is we're just going to play what are called quarter notes. And if you notice with our backing track, we have a guitar and we have drums so that it actually feels like you're playing with a real band to play this early simple progression. 
what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to strike the string four times for each note. If you're using a pick, you'll be just picking down. Or if you're using your fingers, you're going to be plucking up. And as it all sounds together, it should sound like this. There, let's try it with the backing track, see how it goes. just like an old pro. Now that we've done some playing, let's talk about some of the rhythms involved, since we've discussed a little bit of the left hand and the melodies. And the role of the bass guitar falls somewhere between that of a melody instrument with the guitar and also being that of a rhythm instrument with the drums. I always call it like, uh, bass players, we're the mortar between the bricks. The bricks are important, but without something to glue them all together, it doesn't fly. So that's essentially what I view the role of, of a bass player, especially in metal. Um, as you've heard with the, the previous playing example, and you'll hear throughout this program, we have some tracks that have guitar and drums. Now in most Western culture music, most time signatures are what we call 4-4 four, four time meaning that there are four beats within the bar. And we have a playing example here to discuss how the drums outline this simple playing pattern, starting with the hi-hat. The hi-hat always hits uh, the most amount of notes. In this case, it's hitting on the one, two, three, four. With the bass drum now coming in, which is hitting on the one and the three. One, two, three, four. And then the snare drum is going to come in, and that's going to be hitting on the two and the four. So we have a one, two, three, four. Bass, drum, snare, bass, drum, snare. And this type of pattern is going to be in, synonymous with most types of heavy metal and hard rock music that you'll be playing. And essentially that's how the drums break down, and that will give you your rhythm and your timing for you to be playing along with. So let's take this rhythm and timing example a little bit farther and we're going to break this down into quarter notes, half notes, and whole notes, starting with the simplest one which is a whole note. A whole note essentially gets four beats to one strike to the string. So we're going to play a track right now and I'll demonstrate what this is like using the whole note which is pretty simple and you should be able to do along with the track right now. Striking on the one. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Again, we're going to want to be striking along with the bass drum. One, two, three. One, two. So that was a whole note. Now let's move on to the half note, which gets two beats. So essentially we're going to be striking the string with our picking hand twice in one measure. And really with this example, the easiest way is to just strike along with the bass drum on one and three. We're going to run a track right now and play along so you know what it sounds like. Make sure you listen to that bass drum and you'll hear it. Okay, 
So now that was the half note. So now finally let's move on to another simple passage which is the way we played it initially uh, which is using the quarter note. This a quarter note is in this case where each you strike the string four times in the measure because you're essentially playing one time for each beat. We're going to run the track one more time and we'll play along. You can play basically every one of these is, is, is subdivided against the hi-hat which is probably the simplest piece of the drum kit to listen to. Let's see what it sounds like. you're also hitting on the snare drum. So there you go. You've got the whole note, you've got the half note, and you have the quarter note. Three simple ways for you to be able to play cool, easy to play, solid sounding rhythms on your bass guitar. next section I want to get into is talking about the half step. It's a vital component of metal music and it's really the thing that actually separates it mostly from hard rock music. The half step creates a little more tension, creates a little more of that demented, diminished sound that we all like about heavy metal. Uh, let's take a look at this particular passage that I was just playing. Um, on the right hand, I want to talk also about picking. We're going to introduce a new concept of playing eighth notes. This is playing twice as many notes as we did previously with the quarter note. And we're, the, the count of it is one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So as we're picking this, and I'm going to slow it down a little bit here for you, is the way that the, the picking pattern is going to go on this is going to be one and two and three and four and one and two and three, four, one and two and three and four and one and two and three four and that'll be the picking pattern for it. Let's take a look at the left hand real quick to make sure we get the notes right and you can have fun goofing around with these patterns. The half step is a fun thing especially if you're into metal and you, and you, and you know your history of metal you're really going to have fun with this one because most of the popular groups use it. Uh, first we're going to start with the open string then we're going to put our first finger on the third fret then we're going to put our third finger on the fifth fret, but here's where the half step comes in, is we're going to use our pinky to play on the sixth fret, and that's what gives that tension, that, that cool metal sound right there. So when you play it slow, remember our right hand one and two and three and four and one and two and three, four like that. We're going to run the track. So grab your bass, let's play along. Let's have some fun with this one. Remember our counting. One and two and three and four and one and two and three, four. That's some vital metal stuff right there. Now I want to take you into a few more advanced concepts, but before I do, I want to make sure that you've got the previous material down good. Make sure that you've been practicing with your metronome or your drum machine. Make sure you start slow, speed up gradually so that you really feel secure with it. Nothing is more frustrating as a musician, especially when you're first starting out, than feeling like you don't have the material down. It makes you feel like you're not progressing and that you're, you're not getting any better. And that can be very frustrating and a lot of musicians end up quitting and walking away from their instrument. And we don't want that to happen because part of what I'm trying to do here is show you how I play 
and essentially give you some skills and some techniques so that you can develop how you play. Now what, what I want to move into here is muting and for the purposes of what I'm going to talk about here is using a pick. So for this little section here we are going to have to grab a pick which we talked about earlier. Muting is, is ultimately about using your picking hand to settle a bit on the string to, to, to deaden the sound of the string as opposed to an open string which sounds like this. A muted string sounds like this. Muting is a vital part of the heavy metal sound and it's going to be something that to become an accomplished heavy metal bass player you're going to need to get this technique down. Uh, really the, the, the nuts and bolts of it comes with having kind of the meat of the palm of your hand not off of the of the string but resting slightly on the saddles of the string. You don't want to be too far back because again you won't get any mute. You don't want to be too far up because you won't get any note. So it's really a matter of kind of finding your spot right there so that you can be able to get the true sound of the note and not deaden it too much yet not have it too far open. I'm going to play along with a track right now and another thing with this is I want to use the concept of both up and down picking. Most of what I've been doing so far has been down picking and this is another eighth note passage meaning that we're going to be playing eight strokes on the string for each bar. In other words, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Another thing that is important to get down as a metal bass player, especially if you're playing with a pick, is to be able to do the up and down strokes. And this is something you should practice slowly and diligently with your, with your drum machine or your metronome. And it should sound like this. Making sure that each of them are even. So we're going to run this with a track right now and play along with it. And this should, it should sound like this. And again, these things should be practiced on a regular basis with both your metronome or your drum machine using both the up and the down picking as well as just straight down picking so that you can perfect the muting technique. Okay, now we're going to start to add some more notes to our playing. And we're also going to start to move up the neck instead of just across the neck. We're going to use our A minor scale as the basic notes of what we're going to play. And what we're going to start to introduce here are we're going to start to introduce the octave, which in the A minor scale is the same note one octave higher. So if we hit the A, for instance, on the fifth fret of the fourth string, and then we hit an octave above it, is that note. If you hear it's the exact same note, it's just that one is higher than the other. How we get to that is it's eight steps up. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so that's how we get to that note. That's called an octave. In between here, we can also add something called the fifth. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so it's five steps up. And in this pattern, just for the for the picking purposes, we're going to play eighth notes on this. So again, it's one and two. Let me show you, I'll play it for you slowly, but I'll show you a quick little pattern and then we'll play along with it to a track here in a little while. So what we're doing is one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and we're adding that fifth in there. Okay? So now to look at where the notes are on the neck, we're starting with our first finger on the fifth fret of the fourth string, which is the E string. Where we're hitting the fifth is right here with our third finger up here on the seventh fret of the A string. One, five, one, five. That's a good little interval to, to train your ear to start to hear. 
Then we're going to move up to the 8th fret on the E string. And we're just going to drop our 3rd finger right there again. That instantly becomes a 5. 1, 5. Then we're going to move up to the 10th fret on the E string. Drop the 3rd finger down. So it's 1, 5, 1, 5, 1, 5, 1, 5, 1, 5, 1, 5, 1. And that's how we play the 1 and the 5. Now, simply enough, to add on top of that, we just drop the octave up there. So we're keeping our hand in the same position on the 5th fret, we add the 1, the 5, the octave, which is the 8. I prefer to use my pinky finger with that because I think it makes a cleaner sound. The other way you could do it is to just drop your, lay your 3rd finger across. So we essentially do the same thing. We do the one, three, one, one, three octave. Then we move that up to the eighth fret and do the same thing. Then finally we move it up to the tenth fret and do the exact same finger shape. So here's how it sounds when I was we incorporate the picking as well as the actual fingering. That's the five. Now I'll add the octave on top. And again, the picking of the of the uh, eighth note pattern should be one and two. Four and and four and and four and one and two and three and four and because remember we want to keep playing in eighth notes. Let's run along with the track and see what this sounds like as we're playing with guitars and drums. We'll keep it real simple just to start with, just to get the feel of it. Now we'll add the fifth. So you can experiment a lot with that. You can pick any particular pattern of notes that you may want and you can move that around and that's a very significant part of the heavy metal sound and it lets you incorporate and add some more notes to your playing to add a little bit of flavor. Try it on. What I was just playing was a simple pentatonic uh, scale, which is a great pattern to use and to incorporate, to take what we were just talking about in the previous section using the fifths and the octaves, taking it to a new level. Again, you're starting to branch out, you're starting to add a little more color to your playing, you're starting to move around the neck, both up and down the neck this way, and also being able to move across the neck with greater ease. Pentatonic scale is penta meaning five and tonic meaning notes. So it's a five note scale. And as it applies to the A uh, minor scale that we were talking about earlier, there's many, many different shapes of, this, of, uh, of the pentatonic scale that are available on the website if you want to download them and look at them. But let's take a look at just the simplest one. A minor is pretty simple for these purposes. So we're going to take our first finger and we're going to put it on the fifth fret of the E string. Then we're going to reach up and use our fourth finger to go up to the eighth fret for note number two. The third note is going to be the first finger on the A string. And we're going to put our third finger on the seventh fret. Then we're going to put our first finger again on the fifth fret of the D string. And then finally, we're going to put our third finger on the seventh fret.
So what we have is a scale that sounds like this. Five notes up, five notes down, and that's our scale. Now as we play along with this, the progression here that I've outlined is the A, C, and the D, which again are all part of the minor scale that we talked about earlier and fit really comfortably within the pentatonic scale. Now for our purposes here, we're going to keep our hand in this particular box and this shape here so that we get comfortable with where those notes are that lie right underneath our finger. You can, you, you can vary and fluctuate your, your picking pattern a little bit too. You don't have to be so literal in just playing only down picking or up picking or even just playing eighth notes because that's part of playing pentatonic is that you're able to move around. It's a very bluesy kind of very slinky feeling kind of uh, pattern to play. I'm going to play along with the track. Do a little experimenting on your own too. have to do the landing right on the on the beat either. You can get creative with this. It's a really fun fun scale to play. Of course I added a few extra notes in the end, but that's part of the fun of it. And really, as long as you're staying within that shape, there really are no illegal notes, as I like to call them, to play. They're all perfectly legal, and they're all part of it, and it's definitely part of the metal sound. So let's take this concept of working around the neck and adding some color to our playing even one step farther. We've talked about playing with fifths, playing with octaves. We just worked on the pentatonic scale. Another really simple, colorful way to, to help incorporate yourself in when you're playing with a guitar player is the use of what's called arpeggios. Now this is where we're picking certain notes that are in a chord, which most guitar players are playing chords. So when your buddy comes over with his guitar and shows you these new chords and these new riffs and parts that he's learned, you'll have, actually have something to play along with him. Uh, let's take our example of our C major scale first. We're only going to use three notes here, so we're just going to keep it real simple. So we start with our first finger on the fourth string on the fifth fret. On that same string, we take our fourth finger, go up to the eighth fret, then we jump up to the third string, and we use our third finger to go up here on the seventh fret. It might all sound confusing, but just keep in mind what we're really doing is we're learning the shape of, of playing of the, 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 uh, the notes of that particular scale for this arpeggio, the one, three, five, three, one, three, five, three. And again, if you wanted to play it in a, in a type of a blues setting, it would sound something like this. Again, the use of arpeggios, just another way to help you personalize your style and add a little bit of color to your playing. This next groove is a very cool metal groove and something that's going to make you really feel like you're developing as a metal bass player. It's a line that Steve Harris from Iron Maiden, who's personally one of my favorite bass players, as well as Geezer Butler from Black Sabbath, another favorite of mine, they use these kind of grooves all the time and it's very synonymous with kind of a cool traditional European type of metal. I call it the gallop. And here's essentially how it sounds. It's, it's, and it's, I find easiest if you use a, a pick, but it's also something that can easily be done with your fingers as well. And I'm only going to be using two notes in this. I'm going to place my first finger on the second fret of the E string, which is an F sharp, and then I'm going to put my pinky 
up here, my fourth finger, up here on the fifth fret of the E string, which is an A. And I'm just going to alternate back and forth between those. And here's what the, here's what the gallop sounds like. And the count of it is pretty simple, actually. It's mostly kind of an eighth note pattern. One, two, three, four, and a one, and a two, and a three, and a four, and a one, and a two, and a three, and a four, and a one, and a two, and a three, and a four. It's pretty simple, and it's mostly just a cool groove and a feel. When you hear it, you'll know it. And once you start locking into it, if you're playing along with your drum machine or your metronome, you're definitely going to really start to feel the pulse of it. It's really a cool thing. I'm going to play along with the track right now so you get a feel for it as well. solid, very metal. The last groove that I want to talk about is the use of sixteenth notes. We've been talking about subdividing with a whole note, a half note, a quarter note. Recently we've been playing with eighth notes. Sixteenth note is something where we subdivide it even farther. And this next groove that I want to go through in this pattern is something that should definitely be played, I think, with a pick. It's nice because you can also incorporate the muting technique that we talked about earlier. Uh, for these purposes, uh, I'm going to play the notes on the E string, starting with an open note. Then we're going to go to the third fret, which is a G. And then you can just use your third finger to go up to the fifth fret and play an A. Now for the subdividing of the sixteenth note, as the eighth note we went one and two and three and four and we're going to subdivide even further and we're going to go one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a and counting along is something I do it even when I'm in the studio. I do it sometimes when I'm learning new things. So don't be afraid to count. And if you have to count out loud to get started, don't feel embarrassed about it. It's a cool thing. We're going to play along with the groove here real quick to see what it sounds like. Again, great technique, vital part of being a great solid metal bassist. As you may notice, this track sounds a little bit darker and a little bit thicker and meaner than the other ones. That's due in part to the, to the new tuning that I have here. Those of you that have been listening to new metal and metal in recent years are very familiar with the new tunings that are coming out. A lot of it started with the advent of the seven string guitar, where guys wanted to start tuning down. And even in the early 90s, some bands like Alice in Chains were starting to do a tuning that I'm in right now, which is where you take your E string, and you tune it down to a D. We call this a drop D tuning, where essentially you drop it down one whole step. 
Now it's easy to do because you already have another D on your bass guitar, correct? Right there. So as we're tuning and you're dropping your, your, your uh, E string down to a D, you've already kind of got a built-in tuning mechanism right here. Of course, using a professional tuner is always best, but this is how we get to this particular one right here. And again, it adds a little bit of girth, makes it a little bit darker, a little bit meaner, fatter sound to it. Uh, and for, and the, for this particular track, I'm mostly just kind of playing, a, a hitting some eighth notes, I'm syncopating some things with the right hand. You can be creative and come up with your own line. I'm just using this one as an example to just demonstrate the tuning. Um, I'm using the open string, the third fret of, the, of our now D string, the fifth fret, and then I'm actually incorporating that half step again. Now what's cool about this is our octave is now right here. There's our D. So we can play it. All kinds of cool things you can do in new tunings and it's, I, I find it to be a very creative thing. We're going to run with the track one more time on the way out just so you can hear what it sounds like again playing along. Detuning. It's cool. It's metal. When you're first starting out playing bass, you, like myself, when I was starting, I always wondered why my bass didn't quite sound like all those records that I was listening to. Well, fear not. They've spent thousands of dollars and there's a lot of expensive trickery and gadgets and a lot of high-tech equipment used in making records. But for our purposes of beginning as bassists, we, there are a few things that we can do uh, to try to alter our tone, to try to get the most pleasant and pleasing sound that we like for, what it, for how it is that we want to play. I, I recommend on the bass to always turn the volume of the bass up as far as it will go. I also recommend turning the tone knobs up as far as they'll go as well. I like to get as much output out of the bass into the amplifier as possible. Now if you want to get a more uh, rounder, kind of bigger sound reminiscent of some of the vintage metal like Black Sabbath and Led Zeppelin, you can turn up the bass control on your amplifier. That will give that big warm bottom sound. If you want to get a little bit more of that kind of 80's sound, which is more reminiscent maybe of what Iron Maiden has, try turning up your treble knob. You can get that kind of khaki, slappier kind of sound going on. If you want to try to get what's more kind of considered a, a, a modern metal bass sound, and certainly something that's reminiscent of the new metal sound, maybe something like what Fieldy of Corn has been doing, try taking your, your mid-range control, if you have it on your amplifier, and turning it down. Essentially what that does in the EQ curve is it kind of scoops that out. That's why we have that sound with where the metal guitars kind of fit right in there, but the bass isn't in there. Ultimately in the, in the sound spectrum, you've got the drums on the bottom, the bass fit in there, on top of that with the guitars on top. So if you kind of think of everything as layering up there, you might be able to get a bass sound that sort of fits somewhere in between there, especially as you start playing with some of your friends or you're playing in bands and often playing with the guitar. It's very hard to sometimes get your bass to stand out around the guitar. Again, a lot of that has to do with how we finger the bass, a lot of it has to do with how we pluck the bass, and that in particular is why I like to use a pick. But in either case, experiment and have fun and come up with a tone and a sound and an equipment setting that's right for you.
All right, I want to talk to you for a moment about practicing because it's something that has kind of a, a stigma, almost like doing homework. You know, it's something we all have to do. It's something that just the sound of it makes us not want to do it. But yet we all practice. I still practice. And I think anybody who has been very proficient at their instrument, and certainly those of us who have become professionals, we need to continue to practice. The things that we've outlined so far in this program, there's some simple things that just as far as learning how to put your fingers on the neck, learning how to use your, your, your picking and plucking hand, going through scales. These are things that are, are, are very basic and very elementary and, and really the, the knowledge that you can gain from these things if you keep studying is really never ending. So what I like to do when practicing is I like to take some time where I know I'm going to sit down and I'm actually going to practice some difficult passages. These may be things that are frustrating for me, things that I can't play up to speed and I want to sit down and I want to start slow. I always practice with a drum machine or a metronome. I don't think any of us are ever beyond that. Having good time is a critical part of being a solid and found musician. Uh, then moving on from there, I like to then take another few minutes where I can just move on and, and be creative. In, in the musical world we call this ad-libbing. And sometimes for us that are songwriters, this is a time where we can sort of forget about the rules, not really throw them out, but forget about them for a while, and sit and explore on our instrument and have fun. That's often one of the things that kind of takes us off into a whole nother, into a whole nother dimension of our playing. And most importantly, I like to always have instruments available to me. You know, if you've only got one bass, it's fine. Don't always put it away in the case so that it requires effort to get it out and you have to clean it off and plug it in and turn on your amp and get everything going. Keep it in a place where you see it because so often the times an instrument that, that sits there that looks inviting is something you're going to want to sit down and play. And you may not even always have time to actually have a set uh, regimen for your practicing. Better to put in 15 to 30 minutes every day because it's fun for you and you enjoy it than not touching the instrument for a week and trying to pick it up and, and cram and, and try to almost like you're doing an exam for school. So I think most of all, most importantly, practicing can be a very fun and an enjoyable and most importantly, a very rewarding part of your playing. Thank you for joining me here with Volume 1. We've gone through some very basic and rudimentary things about be being a beginning bass player, most importantly to becoming a well-rounded musician. Uh, throughout my career I've, had a, I've of course had a lot of professional accolades and accomplished a lot of things that I always wanted to do, but most importantly through all of it I've had a lot of fun. And, at the, and the foundation of it all is I'm a musician. So make sure you keep practicing all of the things that we've talked about this in this program so you'll be ready to move on to volume two. I'll see you from the stage.